What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another Wealth Journey episode. This is episode eight, and today we're going to talk all about my net worth update from the end of July 2024. If you see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my computer. So anyway, we're going to jump right into it. So at the end of July, my checking account had $2,467.57. If you are looking at the spreadsheet I have on the screen, you'll see that those numbers are just rounded up. My savings account had $1,749.23. Like I told y'all in the last video, you're not going to see that number go down anymore. It's only going to go up, even if it only goes up a little until it hits $2,000. So as far as my checking being over $2,000 at the end of the month, and as far as my savings going toward that $2,000 goal, we're moving in the right track as far as that goes. So my emergency fund that I have with Marcus by Goldman Sachs, which is my high yield savings account, that has $7,754.82. And just like I was telling you in episode seven, when I talk about where to put your money when you get paid, I was just telling you where I put my money, where I get paid and how I invest it and how I save it and stuff. And I pretty much announced in that video that for the particular month of July, I would not be putting any money into my emergency fund just for that month because I wanted to make sure I caught up with my other goals. If you want more information on that, check that video out. If you haven't already, I'll link it up here. And if you just want to watch like the whole series in general, you can check out the playlist that's linked below. Now here's where things get really interesting. So my 401k number one, the one that I have for my old job has $10,562 in it. To be exact, $10,562.45. Last month, it was $18,665. That is a gigantic drop, and I will explain exactly why that happened in just a second. But first, we're gonna talk about my 401k number two that I have with my current job. As of the end of the month of July, that one had $84,430.41. It's getting harder and harder to memorize these numbers. Now, we're gonna talk about my Roth IRA. This is what I'm most excited about because yes, you saw that $8,000, more than $8,000 was missing from my original 401k that I had with my previous job. And no, the stock market didn't crash. No, my account didn't get hacked or nothing like that. What happened is I was faced with a very good and important question in one of my Wealth Journey videos. And this question popped up in the comments on one of my videos. It was episode six, where to put your money when you get paid. So I was just kind of telling everybody where my money's going and how I have two 401ks and, and all this other stuff, right? But I was met with the question, why don't you roll over your inactive 401k funds to your active 401k? So shout out to you, Brian Ortega. I will put the comment in my response up here on the screen. But um, after I got that question, I actually looked more into it because initially I didn't mind having two separate accounts for 401k, but I wanna take this opportunity to educate all of you because I got educated and straight up schooled on this. And I'm glad I did because now my net worth is about to increase significantly more and I'm about to tell you why now. So I did some research and I found out exactly why I couldn't just roll this over. So the type of money that was in my initial 401k was within a Roth 401k. Roth 401ks and 401ks are two totally different things. So let me explain. I said, great question. The inactive one is actually a Roth 401k, which cannot be rolled over into a traditional 401k. To your point, I should definitely look into rolling it into my Roth IRA. I'll look into that and report back what happens. So check this out, Brian Ortega, check this out. I made the switch and I did it within a reasonable amount of time. I'm kind of proud of myself on this one now. So what I did was I ended up moving over $8,351 into my Roth IRA once I found out I could roll that over. It was a process and it was a complete pain. I'm talking, it was a thorn in my side. I was getting about hot because the process is kind of dumb. I had to call them up at Vanguard and get them to make the switch. And it wasn't like a digital thing like I was imagining. Being that it's 2024, I thought it was gonna be digital. I do have a little bit of understanding as to why it was a check, but I know for a fact other institutions can digitally make this change. So I had to transfer all that money from the Vanguard account through M1 Finance. And the way they did it was they sent me a check then I had to send the check to my bank account. And that's a process because there's definitely deposit limits within bank accounts. So the bank account that I usually use couldn't do it because the amount for the check was over their deposit limit. Had to use a different account. And then and only then was I able to transfer from my bank account over to my M1 finance account. 
So that was just a pain. So the reason why a lot of people don't transfer money from 401ks or Roth 401ks or whatever the case is, is for one, they don't really truly understand the benefit of doing so. And two, it's a complete pain. Now there is more money involved with this. There's another $10,000, $10.5,000, but it's not all from the same asset class. I need to do more research as far as what I can withdraw from that account without being taxed because my Roth 401k was in one account and then my other asset allocations were in other accounts and they're not listed as Roth 401ks at all. So once I do more research on that, I will let you know, but I was laser focused on getting the Roth 401k into my Roth IRA. And here's why, here's the interesting part that I keep talking about. When you have a Roth 401k, you can put more money in it per year than a Roth IRA, but the thing is, you're held captive to whatever the company's invested in. So if you could only invest in one thing or like three different things, one's aggressive, one is intermediate, one is conservative, you don't have that many choices. But when I took that money out, first of all, I had to list it as a rollover so I didn't get taxed because it literally is a rollover. I had to make sure that they filled it out a certain way when they wrote the check out to me because I had to make sure no one thought that I was just cashing out and then putting it into my bank account and then spending it for wants and needs. That's not what, what happened. So I ended up rolling that over. And the cool thing about Roth IRAs is you can roll your Roth 401k directly in there and it doesn't count towards your yearly contribution for this year, the previous year, or the year before that, or the year before that. And that is awesome because now, as much as you've maybe watched my videos, if you've been watching me for a long time, I've always said, man, I wish I would have put money in my Roth IRA so much sooner because I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to record my screen really quick and show y'all what's up with it. It's about loading. So, I mean, just, just look at this. I was, I was happy because I was getting close to the five figure mark towards the end of, of July. I was at 9,000 and something. So right here I had $9,076 and 40 cents. And so I was getting happy about that, but then boom, 17,200 and all of it, I'll show you all of it is invested within my, they call it my pie, my pie chart or whatever. Um, it's literally this circle, but it's split up into these. This is what I want to be invested in long term. And I've said this in a few videos, but this particular form of investing was not my idea. A lot of the investing I do outside of this is my own idea, but this right here is all Ian Dunlap based on his style of investing and based off of his research and what he found out he's a way better investor than I am. He said, investing in these types of assets and it can be different for different people right but i chose apple and microsoft and then of course voo and vti that makes a great asset allocation because of the simple fact that they all get dividends they all grow steadily they all have a low drawdown and they all have a high potential for growth in the future so it's excellent but i, I was just saying you're held kind of captive to what you could invest in when you're investing in your 401k or your Roth 401k, but you take that money, put it into a Roth IRA and boom, now you have all the things you can invest. You can invest in anything. I don't have to just invest in these four. This is just what I think would give me the best return, especially for retirement. I'm going to have it made. But if you wanted to, you could invest in more things. You could invest in Target, Home Depot, Lowe's. You could invest in Google, NVIDIA. You can invest in anything. Anyway, I don't mean to nerd out when it comes to investing, but I just want to show you. So y'all see right here, this is proof. And it's now August 2nd. So the number over here is going to be a little different than what is in my spreadsheet, which I recorded on the 31st of July, but just bear with me. We're going to go to funding history just for proof now. It shows that in 2024, I've still only contributed 35 hundred dollars almost said thirty five thousand it literally won't let you do thirty five thousand only lets you do seven thousand as indicated by the bar up top but anyway 2023 i only did two thousand 2022 i didn't do anything 2021 i did 1945 and 35 cents i'm going to stop sharing my screen now but that's just to show once you do the rollover it doesn't count for any of that. So I was like, man, I wish I would have contributed more in 2021 and took it more serious in 2022. And I wish I would have done a little bit more in 2023. This year, you already know I'm going to hit that goal because I told y'all in my in one of my last videos that I'm going to start doing 700 a month so I can hit that 7,000 mark for 2024. And we're still on track to doing that. I am 100% 
going to do that. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is because now it's almost like I've erased some of my past mistakes because even though I didn't invest as much as I should have in 2021 or 2023 and I didn't invest at all in 2022, that $8,351 and some change, that makes up for some of it. And so now I'm able to have more shares. So I'm just really excited about it. Maybe I'm more excited than I should be, but I'm just happy to see that through doing these videos, I'm still learning and people are always able to ask high quality questions that make me really think like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? And then I'm able to go back, make business moves, boss moves, and actually change the trajectory of my financial path for the better. I think that is completely awesome. So I'm just excited about that. But anyway, the number that I had written down for the end of July for my Roth IRA was $17,387.59. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So obviously that's a, a big jump from my previous, which was $8,703. Now, my Weeble account did drop a little bit just because Nvidia's dropping and the overall stock market is having like a, we'll call it a very minor drop. But things did go down. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, pretty much everything I'm invested in in my Weeble account did drop down. So now at the end of July, it was $31,785.86, which I'm still pretty happy with because it didn't drop that much. Previously, it was $32,866, but I'm not tripping because my account is still up over 100%. Like I always tell you guys and girls, things will fluctuate within the stock market, but I really want y'all to not sleep on the stock market at all or investing as a whole simply because that is what's carrying my net worth more so than cash. Cash is still important, but your net worth isn't going to grow by a large sum on a month to month basis if you're not investing. That's just a fact. Crypto, which I have been very vocal about not really caring that much about, but it is cool to have extra money that you don't really see, uh, $549 currently. Uh, to be more specific, $548.82, rounded up as $549. Not much to say there, really. Now, for life insurance, I currently, as of the end of July, have $2,327.35. So, just for everybody who criticizes me for having life insurance, I do have two types. I have whole life and I have term. The term pays out a very high amount after I'm gone, which will not happen for a very long time. I will be very, very old when that happens. But I also have life insurance that is whole life that has cash value. I've gotten so much crap about it, but it literally only costs me $125 a month. I've had it I've had it for a while. So it's just going to keep building cash value that you can borrow against without being taxed because it's not an investment, it's insurance. Like there's a lot of good things coming with this. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I know people still might be in the comments talking about how I shouldn't have it. Look, $125 a month isn't killing me. I spend significantly more than that on working out, food, and everything else. And people watching this video are probably in similar boats where they spend significantly more than $125 a month on things that do not pay them back. So do not come for me in the comments talking about it's an irresponsible investment decision. You do what you want with your money and I'll do what I want with mine. I'm not going to get started today. Anyway, my assets totaled out to $159,014, which was a step up from last month, which was $155,491. Now let's talk about liability. Lovely. All right. So student loans, 23419 As y'all know, I'm taking my sweet time with that. And some of y'all have asked me why I don't just liquidate my investments and pay that off because to me, yes, that's an option, but to me, that would not be the most responsible thing for me to do financially right now because the rate that my investments are growing, it, for one, they're growing at the rate they're growing because I bought them at a particular price. The price was fairly low when I got into a lot of my investments, so they grew by a lot and I was able to build relatively large positions compared to if they were a lot more expensive and they were a lot to see more growth because of that. If I were to liquidate them now and pay off my loans, sure my loans would be gone, but if an emergency happened, I wouldn't be able to pull from my investments. And of course I don't plan on doing that, but think about it. I have, let's see, I'm gonna pull it up right now. Right now my investments are up 
I'll even record my screen to show you. So even though the stock market is dropping a little bit, my investments are still up 114%. That's an extra like almost $16,000 at my disposal that I can grab without interrupting the principal or anything like that. And I could take some of that, put it in a savings account if like something crazy or catastrophic happens. I would not have that same luxury if I liquidated almost the whole thing to pay off my student loan debt. So I just, I'm not touching that. I'm sorry. Plus the interest rate is like really, really low on this. For example, I pay 211 a month on my student loans. Last month, my student loans were at $23,603. Now it's $23,419. So 184 of my dollars went toward the debt. $27 went toward the interest. $27 a month. And it's only going to get less as I pay more of the debt off. So we'll, we'll just say for the average of this year is $27 a month. That's not enough interest to concern me to just completely eliminate the debt because that's such a low interest rate. $27 a month. My investments are making me way more than that. So I just want to explain a little bit more as to why I just don't want to just pay my debt off because in the long run, it's going to do more for my net worth and more for my growth. Now, one piece of debt that I am in a rush to pay off is my credit card debt. I did do this 100% on purpose, but I just don't like it being there. I do it to gain some points on my credit card. It pays me a little bit a month. You know what I'm saying? Not anything crazy, but I was going to spend my money on it anyway. So I figured it might as well be on my credit card debt. I pay it off at the beginning of the month like I always do. And then we're good. We're back to square one. No problem. But anyway, $1,303. Here's the thing. I spent half of that on things I would normally spend. So uh, a lot of dates, because if you use my particular credit card on dates and like restaurants and things like that, they end up giving you a good amount of credit card points back to where you can either exchange it for cash value to go into your bank account or, or other benefits that credit cards tend to have, traveling, you know, all that good stuff. But the other half was actually my tires were about useless. So after work one day, me and my coworkers were talking. We just so happened to be in front of my car. He just starts looking. I'm like, what? <laughs> what happened? He looks at my tire. I looked at it up close. The ply was about sticking out of it. Y'all know I used to work in a tire factory, so I know the anatomy of a tire, but I didn't about notice it until he said something about it. I was like, oh man, this ain't good. So if you don't know what ply is, the fabric part of the rubber was sticking out of the tire. Not like really sticking out like this, but like it was exposed, which means you can get a blowout. I ain't taking no chances that day. You know what I'm saying? Even though I had to go back to work and I had to go home, sleep, go back to work that next day. I worked night shift, so I got off in the morning just for a little reference. But anyway, I was like, uh-uh, we're getting this change today. It only costed like $400 some change. A little more because I got some, some other things done with it, but... It didn't cost that much is what I'm saying, but I went ahead and used my credit card on that too. Yes, I do have the money to go ahead and pay for it now, but if I was going to pay for it anyway, might as well get the points for it. That's just, that's just how I look at it. So that's why that's so high. But anyway, my total debt ended up being $24,722. Now for my net worth, it ended up being, you know what I'm saying? For the month of July, good old July, $134,000. $292, which was an improvement from last month, which was $131,888. Absolutely beautiful. I'm never going to complain about my net worth increasing, even if it's so much as by a dollar, because the reality is it could decrease by thousands of dollars, you know? So I'm just thankful to see it move up. And, and that is my net worth update. I know I've spoken a lot and spent quite a bit of time on certain categories, but I really want to use this platform to educate you as I get educated myself. If you want this spreadsheet, as y'all know, y'all can download it for free on my website. Click the link in the description. Check out my book, The Wealth Journey, which is what this series is based on. And just keep enjoying these videos. And if you have any questions or any comments about certain decisions I'm making, don't think that I'm going to read your comment and think that, oh, well, I know what I'm doing. No, like I'm going to look at your comment and think realistically about it and say, well, why don't I do this? And if I disagree with it, I'll tell you I disagree. But if I'm like, wait, this person has a point, I'll let you know you have a point. So but anyway, 
Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching my wealth journey series. I have a lot of fun with this series in particular because you get to see what it's like for a real person to be managing their finances and to make mistakes in real time and things. And uh, my upcoming video within the wealth journey series is gonna be all about my income report and how I've spent my money in the month of July. I'll give you a spoiler alert. The spending got a lot better this time. So stay tuned for that, but anyway, that is a video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video.